Hello, wonderful person, this is Anton, and are you one of those people that don't believe in evolution? Well, too bad, because you're about to watch a video all about that thing that you don't believe in. And it's actually about a video game that is all about that thing that you don't believe in. Well, technically, it's not a video game, it's more of a simulation about that thing you don't believe in. But nevertheless, let's watch and enjoy this video. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. And so right now we are in a little simulation known as Evolve Me. This is actually a free simulation you can download in the link in the description that's uh, made by a person that was participating in these uh, procedurally generated video game competition. And he made this really cool simulation that sort of simulates evolution really, 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 really well. Now, what is evolution? Well, you're about to find out by watching this thingy. Now, this is not really a game because you can't really do anything other than move around and restart. There's only five buttons you have to control. But what we see here are these little cubes of different colors that basically do two things. Well, three things. They move around, they love each other, create babies, which is two. And three is that they basically uh, evolve. They... Uh, continuously change and they create new uh, colors by mixing and by uh, essentially creating new creatures. Now, there's several parameters you can see in the, in the left window there and also population size. And all of this depends on the food that is constantly replenished. And the more food there is, the more uh, creatures will be created. The more creatures there is, the more food they'll eat, the less of them will be left as a result. Uh, there is a possibility that they might all die out. There's actually quite a lot of different uh, randomized events that might occur. Uh, but uh, we're going to start this from scratch in a few seconds. But here, the important thing is to, uh, to watch two things. One is, some of them might actually jump over in one of these regions and might create a completely new population inside one of these boxes. This is essentially how life on our planet ended up on different continents and then evolved to be completely different. This is why we have kangaroos in Australia, but nowhere else in the world except for, I guess, like maybe some islands around Australia. And, you know, you, you might find uh, things like, uh, I don't know, elephants in Africa, but not in North America. And um, there's also other parameters here. So there's things like size. Um, they have the... Uh, chance or probability of things like moving forward, changing directions, keep turning, um, eating drive, sex drive, uh, chance of jumping or to, in order to cross into the other uh, niche, and of course jumping force is how high they jump. So with time, a lot of these numbers will actually kind of move toward the same uh, or similar values. And let's actually find out what happens. So I'm going to just restart this from scratch and you'll see that first of all, all of the colors will change. So initially when you just start the simulation, everyone is different color and they're kind of just jumping around, they're learning things. So essentially now the uh, computer is going to learn to do things. And so they're kind of just kind of chilling around. This life has just begun. Some of them don't even know what to do. Some of them die out right away. So some colors will disappear pretty quickly. But for the most part, the uh, the little cubes that get to procreate and that get to eat a lot will be the most successful ones. So let's see what color we'll end up with and what values and what size and what um, other parameters we'll discover. We're also going to look for these cubes that jump over and see if any of them will actually create a completely new population. So this one failed, it died behind behind the barrier because no one else joined them. But sometimes uh, you'll see that maybe some of them will actually end up jumping in together and creating a new family in one of these uh, continental niches. So this is essentially a very, very simple um, evolutionary simulation that you can totally use uh, to show, you know, your friends, your family, or your kids, if you have kids that you want to teach them about evolution, to basically have them understand visually how evolution works and how it doesn't work. Uh, so the important uh, facts to realize here is that a single organism doesn't actually evolve. They don't do anything. They just get to procreate with other organisms. And that's uh, what uh, evolution is. It's a process of creating offspring that then has slight modification in their genetic parameters, or in this case, in their code. You guys see this? These guys have like five babies. They all jumped out of their, I guess, cubic behinds or whatever, whatever the organ they use to pro procreate. But notice how almost everyone now is like similar color. So this is essential what's going to happen to human beings if everything goes well for us and we don't kill each other. We're going to basically all be a very similar color, uh, you know, kind of a beigey, Asian -y look. And uh, that's essentially the effects of globalization, the effects of intercontinental travel and uh, interracial marriages, which is very, very common nowadays. Now, so 
they're mostly gray now, a little bit different from the color we had previously, but uh, none of them really created any niches yet. So some of them try to jump over, so some of them join these new continents, but nothing is really happening. Uh, the number of population is just over 100, so let's actually see if we can either overpopulate this uh, planet thing, or whatever this field is, and see what happens when, th um, when there is an uncontrollable number of population. And we're also going to see where these numbers head towards. So my guess is that the uh, eating drive and the sex drive will probably increase, and the jumping force might actually not change very much, uh, but the size might drop. So as you can see, original size was four, but it's already dropping. So for some reason, it's actually more beneficial to be small than to be big. Uh, so let's see what happens here, uh, and let's find out where this is going to go in a few minutes. So we just crossed the population number of over 200, so we're now at 220, which is over a double of what it used to be. And you notice that the size has actually decreased dramatically, and this is uh, for two reasons. One of them is that it's actually a lot more efficient for these little cubes to be small since they can move around much quicker and they can eat more food and they can find a partner quicker, so uh, the size has been dropping dramatically. And uh, you can kind of um, see some parallels here with the real life. So, for example, um, a lot of animals has, have actually decreased in size. So, uh, like, birds used to be huge before, uh, so were um, animals like elephants. They used to be mammoths, so they were humongous in size. And uh, over, over a period of time, over millions of years, with evolution by evolving, they actually decreased in size because it was a lot more efficient for them to be small and many than large and less many. And uh, the other reason for the decrease in size is, of course, that they don't require as much food, so they can actually produce more offspring and require less uh, food to maintain themselves as well. Uh, so what else has changed? Um, in terms of their actual behavior, the only major modification has been basically changing directions, which actually decreased, so they're more likely to follow sort of similar direction. And um, But they have, for some reason, increased in turning. So even though they won't change directions, they will keep turning a lot more often than, than usual. Their eating and sex drive um, practically double, so they're more likely to eat and they're more likely to essentially have sex. And uh, in terms of the jumping, the jump force has dropped, but the jumping chance has increased because they uh, very likely realize that they don't have to jump as high, but they really should try jumping once in a while because there's a lot more food right here that's completely untouched by everyone else. So if two or three of them make, can make it here and uh, basically procreate enough, like these two guys might actually be able to meet and have a baby. If they do that, then this particular area will uh, will actually have a completely new niche with a lot of uh, new uh, population and a lot of new creatures that will basically live here. So right now it hasn't really happened yet. This guy is eating everything, but he's yeah, they're all dead. And but over there you can see that this definitely exploded. So there's a new um, area that has slightly higher population than what we just had, but they might actually die out as well because there's simply not enough food for everyone in this little niche. And there we go, that's actually an extinction event. So all of my little gray, gray cubes, even though there were so many of them, died. And this is simply because the, the way this algorithm works is that it's looking for everything randomly. So if it doesn't find food or if it doesn't find a partner, you'll very likely uh, die. And the other thing is that you can kind of see that the food in this area is actually changing really, really fast. It's uh, uh, growing and disappearing a lot quicker than it does over here. So this is uh, maybe not a very good place to live because food there seems to be a little bit unpredictable. But here we go. There's another niche that's been created and possibly there will be some success here. But yeah, it looks like another extinction event. And anyway, so looks like everyone turned completely gray. Very interesting. This is essentially the result of mixing and, sh and uh, shifting around. And look at the amount of creatures we have now. We have over 350 cubes. The population has increased dramatically. And as, as I keep rolling this, they'll eventually stabilize at some number. Um, they'll probably not all die out. Uh, this area will very likely survive because the food here is quite plentiful. Um, but their numbers will change. Their jumping force, their sex drive, their jumping um, ability will change as well. So this is a pretty cool simulation to explore. Let's, let's actually do this one last, last time. We're going to reset the game and see what color we end up with at the end. And uh, after this, you can go ahead and try this yourself. The link for this is in the description below. 
And so here we go, we start with 100 creatures, suddenly they explode in numbers, uh, and they're going to start changing everything, and we're just going to sit right here and watch them go crazy and change colors and mix and shift and move around. And only a few minutes later, this is what I get, look at that, they're now completely different colors, sort of a beigey, browny color, with uh, a lot of them still doing exactly the same thing and having pretty much the same numbers, but these guys are seem to be a little bit more keen on jumping, they're, and their jumping force is a little bit higher than before. And so that's essentially Evolve Me, check it out in the description below, do try it out, it's kind of fun, and let me know what color you get as a result of mixing of these cute little creatures. Also, check out the website where this person actually created a few other games because he is quite awesome. He's been quite productive and, uh, you know what, go and support him. Because for some of those games, he doesn't charge any money, but you know what, donations are always welcome. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. Hopefully you learned something from this video and hopefully you will subscribe and also come back tomorrow to learn something completely different, something new and something maybe fun, maybe not. We'll see. You'll find out tomorrow. I'll see you guys later. Space out. Bye-bye.